and happy Tuesday. Where's the kid? There it is. Okay. Hello. I am back. You are here. Hi. So, I am finally here to talk about uh, Valley of Souls or Valley of the Souls. You know, I really don't know which one it is. The last book in the Dubrick Byerly series written by Tamara Siler Jones as she was known then or Tambo Jones as she's known now. Uh, this was a trilogy of books and I really, really loved the first book. I, I really liked the second book. Uh, I got a little emotionally caught up into it, angry at a few of the characters, but still loved it. And you know what? Book number three, I still liked it. Pretty sure. Um, this happens sometimes with series books. The last one in the series can tend to feel rushed or not enough detail given in certain areas. And I think that this one certainly had that problem going on with it. But let's talk about it. So, <laughs> first of all, I want to talk, I want to discuss, I've talked before about how thankful I am to the author for writing a fantasy book in which the names are not atrocious and completely impossible to pronounce. We had a problem with the second book, uh, Threads of Malice, because I still am having problems with, how would you pronounce that mage's name? Fwash? Fwatch? Fwitch? What? This time, the bad guy is a bone mage, at, no, blood mage, excuse me, blood mage, and her name is Fair Sweeney, which is, oh, come on. The, they're calling her a blood mage. Let's call her a witch. Can you think of a book about a witch named Fair Sweeney and she's bad? How awesome is that? I love that name. Now, this book in tone is very, very, very different from the first two. Maybe not the end of the second book. The end of the second book sets the tone for this book. It's very dark. It's very dismal. It's very traumatized, if we're being honest. So, you know, the first book, it is very business as usual. We're just doing a job. We've got a problem. We're going to solve it. The second book is a business as usual. We're going to solve it. Let's talk a little more about family. Let's talk a little more about history. Things go wrong, but ultimately we prevail. This, the third book is very, we got messed up in that final battle from the second book. We are scarred. We're trying to move on with life, but things are hard. God, so like, Dubrick, spoilers, spoilers, we're just, I'm going to go for it. Dubrick and Maeve are together. He has moved her from her town to his suite in the castle, Thaldora. And there's the hope, new hope there, especially, well, I'll skip that spoiler, but, but there's hope and there's happiness actually for Dubert for once. Now, having brought up Maeve, can we talk for a second? Uh, Dubert's first wife, Oriana, we learn more about how she was a mage killer and we actually get to read passages from her journals back in the day during the mage wars when she was a mage killer, the stuff that she did. Love it. I loved that little, because holy shit, he keeps, Dubert keeps recalling Oriana as like an angel. It, it, so beautiful. So, you know, he, he, so tragic because she died in flames and not really, but that's, you know, let's not give that spoiler away too. <laughs> but you learn to find out Oriana was an ass kicker. She was actually brutal you know she did things that were just like woo, woo, you know all's fair in time of war but woo, loved it i loved that and we still got some more looks at the history of the area not just in the mage wars but in the aftermath when they were trying to rebuild and why you know it was tunkek who got um to be king and why brushgar got to be lord of faldora and it was an election basically which is we uh, get to meet um, new characters of history that are now dead, but they're they're like mythical figures now. And it's just, I really love that historical aspect of this book. Um, so we're back to Maeve and now uh, Maeve is doing her best and she's, they're completely renovating Dubrick's suite, nesting, 
Um, she's setting up her weave in there, her weave, her, <laughs> her loom, and she's making fabrics. And actually, people in the town and the rich people in the castle are placing orders with her. That's awesome. Now let's talk about Otley. Poor Otley. He he had a bad deal in the second book and he is very much traumatized from it but what makes it worse is his family is teasing not teasing him treating him badly for it, actually beating him the other pages the young pages that he can uh sort of bunk with they're horrible to him there's nobody for otley except for lars lars has become this godlike figure in Otley's mind, you know, when he is feeling distressed, he calls out for Lars. He he goes out of his way to find Lars because Lars saved him. That's how he remembers it. Lars saved him in the second book. And Lars, if I were a teenage girl, I would be getting on, um, what's that website called? Uh, uh, it starts with a D, um, where they do fan art. What the hell is that website called? I know it. I promise I do. It's been a long day. Uh, I, we'll get to it later. I would be downloading fan art of Lars and hanging it all over my walls. That's a great character. We got a little too much of Lars in this book. We got a little too much of the Lars and Jess thing. I would have been happy just getting um, Lars at work, but also, you know, let's hint around at, you know, how in love they are. But I, also, I want to see more of how he's failing to pass archery in order to be to graduate from page to squire. This is a big deal to him, and he sucks at archery. He can't do it. And it is something, it is a great deal of stress to him that he is unable to do this. That was fun. We just got too much of the mushy mushy. I don't like that stuff. We got a lot of it in this. Um... We got a lot of Jess off on her own, kind of doing her own thing, dealing with her family. The baby has like the worst case of colic ever and will not stop screaming. So Jess's mother is just tired. Um, her sister Finn, as we found out in the second book, is pregnant and trying to hide it from her family, even though she's actually showing. There's just, there's a lot. And I've, I've mentioned in posts before, videos before, there's so many different points of view so many perspectives and they they all did come together at the end they did they all sort of wound together for the main story and it was still too much I maintain there was too much going on one thing that was too much and it wasn't even you didn't even get a good payoff was the spy plot so Dan's daughter and Jess's sister Finn is seeing and pregnant with a Paige's baby. The Paige's name is Gilby, and he is the son of, is it Sir or Lord? I think it's Sir Talmill. And this is a guy who lives at the castle. He's one of the um, kind of upper crust people. And it turns out that he is part of a spying thing, and he's making his son... Uh, be kind of the runner and one of the reasons why Finn and Gilby are holding off and running off together and telling Finn's family that she's pregnant besides the fact that Finn is 13 years old um if my oldest son is 13 oh my god but besides all of that is because uh Gilby's father Sir Talmill has been threatening Finn uh, to Gilby saying, you know, you do what I tell you or we will kill the girl. You do what I tell you or we will cut the baby out of her. Um, this guy's disgusting. And the fact of the matter is we really don't get a lot of this. Not payoff wise. There's a whole lot through the book talking about it. Building up the plot. Building up the reveal of the plot. And then it's just kind of, it's like a sentence in the last chapter of the book saying, oh yeah, they've been caught and they'll be hanged. This is a series I definitely could have used a fourth book. I could have gone on indefinitely. I really like these characters. I'm really invested in them. This is just me. This is my taste. This is me just having a bit of a bitch. I'm a fan. Make no mistake. 
the last book in a series, especially when it's planned to be that way, I have found has always just kind of been messy because you have, you've set out to tell so much of a story and sometimes it's not enough. Sometimes it's too much. We get a mixture of that in this one. Having said that, I mean, I, I kept saying, you know, I'm not really digging it. I'm having a hard time getting into it. We'll see how it ends. I, I, I'm pretty sure I liked it. it. I finished reading it on Friday. It's Tuesday now. Um, the last chapter, I think, was a little bit of a downer. Even though it tried to end on a happy note, you know, Lars gets to meet his real mother and he takes Jess to go meet her. I don't know. I, I, you know, so much of it ends on a down note. Even where it tried to be happy, I think that's... I think that's where I'm kind of struggling a little bit. I don't always need happy endings. As a writer, I almost rarely write a happy ending. I like it that way. It's more realistic. I don't need everything to be tidy and tied up in a bow. I don't. There's just something about this one. We spend the whole book looking for one thing. And it turns out that that thing that they're sent out to investigate is not actually the dangerous thing. The headless sheep and stuff, that's not actually dangerous. It's its immoral. It is misguided. But it's not the evil thing. The evil thing is found elsewhere. And once that's defeated, they still have to deal with the misguided thing. And it, too, is just given an afterthought sentence at the end. I don't know. So the misguided thing, her name is Arian. And she has a son, Hayden, I think his name is. And they, Dubrick brings Hayden to live with Dean and his wife, even though they try to tell him, you know, we're stretched thin as it is. We've got all these kids. We have a grandbaby on the way. We can't have this kid. And, you know, Dean's wife, I can't for the life of me remember her name. Is it Saria? It's Saria. Um, she's like, yeah, we'll take him. We'll take him. And then the book ends with Dubert going back up to his own suite. To, I, I gotta spoil it, I'm sorry. He goes back to his own suite to be with Maeve, who is now completely deformed from her ordeal. She's lost an eye, she's got this big scar on her face, and she's pregnant. They're setting up to have a baby. Why are you... Why, why are you adding more strain to Dean and his family? When you're preparing to have a kid, couldn't you add one more? Poor Hayden, he's, oh, his life sucks. It's always sucked, even though his mother really loves him. His mother really, really loves him and really did all that she thought was best for him. Now, in the grand scheme of things, intent doesn't always mean everything, but I think it has to be considered here because... It's a long story and it's a bad story. What happens with Arian and what ultimately ended up happening to Hayden as a result. So, you know, something that this author is really great at is writing kind of these haughty, full of themselves, detestable characters. And we, we've gotten one in every book. I love it. I think it's great. We got one and we got many in this one. Sir Talmill's one. Um, what is it? Jural? who's in the town where they're investigating all these headless sheep. He is a bastard. And his son, Tupper, double bastard. It's kind of funny to me that, you know, he had to spend most of the story in jail because they didn't want to deal with him. And, you know, we get... A, excuse me? Can you be quiet? We... I don't know why my... I'm so sorry. We get a... um really great scene where Dubrick finally has it. The first two books, he's had to sort of tiptoe around some things because um, his boss, Lord Brushgar, uh, he likes to give in to the nobles. He likes to give in to their complaints. And you know, a lot through, through these books, the nobles are the ones doing the bad things. And when they complain about Dubrick coming for them, they run and wind to Brushgar, and Brushgar comes down on Dubrick for doing his job. And in this book, Dubrick has had it. He goes in and he threatens Brushgar, which he does. It's a big deal. 
but they've known each other for a really long time. Brushgar kind of takes it, but I mean, Dubrick puts his boot down and is like, you're going to let me do my job. You're going to stay the hell out of my way. Huh. You know, it's one of those moments where you're like, yes, it finally happened. Yes. More of that. So many great things about this book. So many. I did enjoy it. I am a huge fan of this series. I mean, I'm going to recommend the shit out of it to people. I just, I wish it had ended a little better, especially that last chapter. It just, and again, as someone who rarely likes super happy endings, and this isn't a not happy ending. It is happy. It is. It just, boy, it didn't work for me. I felt I'm still wanting, you know, there's more to it that I need. I need, I need more. I need to know more about what ends up happening to Otley. Will he stay a page? Will he pursue becoming a squire? What will come of Lars with his adopted family and the, that adopted father who was always so cruel to him? They, it, it, what kind of father is Dubrick? Does he live to see that child grow? I mean, how many more mages are out there? They don't really talk about it in the first one. In the first book, we know that the mages are all gone and that there are a few magical uh, uh, items that are still around and they're forbidden but they're still around because we know that because the killer has a magical cloak that makes him invisible which was a mage item but in the second book there's mages and the third book mages like how many mages are still around maybe there's another mage war coming I want more because this, it, it doesn't feel done. I think that's one of the problems I have with it. There's, you know, life goes on and who the hell am I to think I deserve to have every question answered? Exactly. If I were the writer, I would say that. I would be like, who the hell are you to have every question answered? Life goes on. There are always more questions than answers. Yes. But as a reader and speaking completely from an emotional place, I want more. But thank you so much for recommending these books to me. What happened to my remote? Oh, I am a mess today. I'm so sorry. Thank you for recommending these books to me. I actually had a blast reading them. Had a little trouble with the third one, but I think that also coincided with the holidays being around and I had to binge on so many Christmas movies. I mean, I like Christmas movies. I had a good time. So it just didn't mesh well with Dubrick. Dubrick's not a Christmassy kind of guy. But I mean, I did. I enjoyed this book. I probably would have just either, I, I would have completely taken out the spy subplot thing. It was, it was too much. And then it, it, it had a very disappointing end. Um, but other than that, I enjoyed it. it. It's my least favorite of the three. What's my first favorite? I don't know. I think it's just an order. One, two, three. I really, oh God, I'm so sorry. I got to take up. I, <laughs> I just finished eating a bunch of pizza. So, we're going to be reading just books from now on. If you follow me on social media, you'll see the stack of books. I can't fit it all in the thing. Stack of books that I got for Christmas, and I want to start working through those. I also have to read a book for my other podcast, the Ghost Riders podcast, um, where we'll talk about it. But I will keep you updated. The next book I'm going to read on my own is a little short one, but I, it, this is called... Um, Creativity, A Short and Cheerful Guide by John Cleese. I, I couldn't help it. I had to buy it. So I'm going to read that one. That'll be my next on my own book. And I will keep you updated after that. <sighs> Tell me, what are you reading? What are you enjoying right now? Are you watching any good shows? I am re-watching The Office for like, this is maybe the fourth time. Probably next Tuesday's show will be about The Office and about the characters and about how... I disagree with most people's views of certain characters. Spoiler, Jim Halpert is not the great guy everybody says he is. Double spoiler, Team Dwight Schrute all the way. Yep. <laughs> so that'll be it for today. Thank you so much for being here with me every week. For my nonsense, for my rambling, I get on here and act like I know what I'm talking about and I do not. But thank you for being here anyway. I really enjoy doing these videos and I enjoy talking books. So please, again, what are you reading? What are you watching? What's good to you this time of year? Because, I don't know, 
January always seems kind of weird. The, all the decorations go down. There's kind of nothing to look forward to now. We're kind of reestablishing routines after the holiday break. What are you using to get through that to while you're reestablishing your routine? Hit me up. Tell me. I enjoy talking with you guys. So thank you very much. And let's see. How's the remote going to treat me today? Bye. Oh, it's going to do me dirty. Let's go. <laughs>